I never thought about this when I was applying to art school, but when you think about what they're looking for, they know that every student's not going to enter into fill-in-the-blank major. They're going to get everything from film students to illustrators to sculptors. So don't be afraid about really showing what your expertise is at the same time of showing your willingness to change and willingness to grow. Starting with the first couple images, these three, first it's really good that you've organized it with these life drawings first. These life drawings, charcoal, black and white, but they all have the same issues for me, some better than others, where they don't quite push the space enough, they don't quite push the value enough. This one is doing really well with creating a space, but you could see how in that open doorway as it leads back into the hallway, and we can talk about where you're showing this in later pieces really well, but since it's the same value as the foreground and the middle ground, it all kind of becomes a flat space. Now for this one, you have really dark, heavy lines to outline the figure, but you're not really using those darks for anything except the hair and those outlines. There's that one shadow below the leg that's really grounding the image, which is really cool. And you can see already how that is doing so much work to add gravity to the piece, but it needs to be pushed further with the rest of the image. This one is doing also like a better job, but it needs to be pushed a little bit further. Like that black in the background, push that way backwards, make it darker. Bring out those more subtle lights and shadows in the toy itself. You're doing some really cool things with the reflective light underneath the head, and the shadow is coming across really well, and that texture in the white surface on top. It's a good start, but they need to be pushed forward. You have later in your portfolio images that show that you can push them further. You gotta work on the space a little bit more. See, notice on the bottom one how the trees in the background, some of them appear to be at the same level as the tree in the midground. The one on top, there's too much dark, so it's having the same problem, but for a different reason. The biggest issue is bringing out that value to create space. This is a stellar, not just example, but also layout. This is so professionally done and very well presented. Your adventurous nature with art, your desire to learn and grow and make new works, yeah, it's absolutely stellar. They're well photographed, which is a tricky part for sculptures. They're well displayed. And the variation in the shapes is so cool and unique. You have some that are very simple and straightforward, and some that are getting really exciting. This one is all right. I don't think you need it in your portfolio. It's one of those where there's a thing that comes up often with portfolios of you show the same skills better in other pieces. The colors are pretty great. Um, the application is all right. It's just not wowing me like some of your other work. This is really cool. And it's cool not just in the application and your technique, but also the boldness and the excitement. And it's cool that you're showing these different levels. Don't be afraid to show really what you specify in. Look at what you're doing here with getting those, working with the colors, you can get those really dark values and making cool space. Like in the area with like the fish and the tree towards the center, behind it is that dark, rich purple and red. Of course, those images are in like a white application on top, and that is making some killer space and contrast right there. You might want to try like getting this image and just for your own benefit, converting it into grayscale, black and white, and you'll really start to see how the work that you can so masterfully apply with color, you need to start bringing that into the black and white as well. This is a really cool little pair here. You mentioned that you want to go into illustration, perhaps sculpture, printmaking, sorry, my bad. This is really good, showing a nice illustrative quality. The colors are really well played here. The space is, they're having a problem with it, and this is such a common problem with like detailed pen and ink work like this. Things that are in the distance have the same amount of detail and line application as things in the front, and that flattens the image. In the future, playing with these, that combination of ink and watercolor or marker that's working really well, try it out where in the background you just keep it pencil. I think you'll be really surprised at how effectively that makes the space feel more real and apparent. Also, really good uh, color working with these two, of having the, the green and the red, like just that nice color play is really working nice. This is one of your best pieces, I think, as well. You're being bold with colors, you're not afraid to use them, which a lot of people are afraid to use them. The composition's unique and exciting. It's central, but it, it works. It's all pulling into the fridge like the animals are. The perspective is like wonky, but in an intentional way. And again, try bringing this into a grayscale and see how that works for you. This one is also really cool. And again, 
very well photographed and represented here. It's showing your strength in that illustrative quality, but also that excitement of like the sculptural opening of the laundromat door. I'm assuming that's like tracing paper or something, or vellum maybe? Yeah, that's really nicely done. And see this one, you're starting to make that nice space in that background there, leading off into the end. This is another one of your better pieces. It's showing a cool, fun playfulness with the animals. It's showing your illustrative nature. Now there's something here that I want to point out that's working well that you can bring into your other pieces and areas where in this one it drops the ball. Notice how the two characters in the foreground have really thick, dark, black lines forming their outline. And now notice how the sculptures and the paintings on the wall have thinner, more delicate lines. And I know that's intentional and look at how stellar that is making that space there. That's really just carving it out into the background. Now, when you put in characters in the middle ground, take the elephant and the cat looking at the sculpture, they're made with a thicker, darker line as well, so that's bringing them more forward. And at times, that can be a little confusing. Notice how it looks like the dog that's standing next to the elephant, but behind the sculpture. So the sculpture is a thinner line than the dog, and that makes a confusing thing for the eye, where the dog seems to come up forward. And that's all because of that line quality. This one is also really cool. Your sense of color, again, I gotta say, is really great, and it's really, like, impressive for j just applying to art school. It's simple color schemes, but they work. I can't remember which where I heard this, but it's that wonderful idea of, like, all color schemes are simple. The rules are there, but it's really coming off well. Since you're not really playing much with space and stuff, it doesn't become a problem in this one but where you are using it, you're using it well. Like what we talked about last piece, the picture frame, the fox, and the duck, they've got that thicker line in front of them, right? Now you look at the background and the wallpaper, in parts of that, you've just used watercolor, and see how strongly that makes that space fall into the background. Now there's something too where the background green watercolor, that's working to push it in the back, but the color is also very vibrant, which is also bringing it forward. So something to play around with in your next pieces. This one has a really cool, unique graphic line quality in comparison to the others. You're being really intentional with your line weight and your line choice in this one. The colors are pretty rad. Yeah, I would keep it in and include it because you're doing some really cool, subtle things with the color that are impressive. The purple shadowing within the barns is really nice. Yeah, I think you have some better pieces than this one, but it's also, I think it's still worth including. Apart from the foldable object, the paintings you have in above those are showing some really cool and beautiful subtle color choices and also really subtle line work, which is a little absent in your other pieces. Not to say your other pieces are worse than what's depicted here, but I would try that moving forward if you want to like recreate some of these pieces. Take some of the sensibility that you have in this work, bring that forward in recreating. I would dog ear this one of good elements, maybe worth like recreating, as well as, yeah, maybe this one. This is one of your strongest pieces. It's so successful, showing just little editorial images, showing different line weight, showing how to get the eye to focus. Whether compositional studies or editorial images or things for the school newspaper or something, they're really nicely done. Some of my favorites, like, look at the one on the bottom left. That's so wonderful. And it brings up that idea of, like, compositionally and value-wise and color-wise, a work of art should work from both 10 inches away to 10 feet away and 10 centimeters away. And these check all the boxes. Like that one in the bottom left, I can look at it and find those wonderful little details if I go up close. But then if I step away, I can still see a lot of really amazing things happening. The composition is just so strong. Really smart of you to show all of these together because it does work as one cohesive piece. The outline of them, the kind of boxing square, it's exciting and it's vibrant and it's not just a simple black line, which you so often see in editorial or comic work. These are two some of your like successful pieces, like really successful pieces. They're cool, obviously, because we get the sense that they're characters and we get the sense that they're drawings of people, and that's very believable. And you're also doing a really fun thing of like the old timey like carnival posters with them. Really look into the detail that you've applied in these and then bring that thought to what we were talking about with these earlier images. Look at how your variation in line weight is really helping to define the space and change that value. You using the more gray tone markers, but just for the background? How cool is that working out for you? I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the hand in the image on the right. 
Uh, but overall, I think these are really successful and show your chops, your skills, your playfulness, your whimsy. This one, as a whole, I don't think it really works. Compare these little vignettes to these, it's really not holding water too well. There are some cool things happening. For example, when I first like opened up this image, it was a pretty big file, so the, my screen just showed the suits at the top. You've got some really good technique in applying the fabric right there, which is awesome, but I think altogether, there's some weakness showing through here, like right below the two suits, like the two faces, and then the faces on the left and right of them. There's just some kind of sloppy application there. And the text isn't really playing well with the images, I would lose this piece from the portfolio. This one is the one that I kept referencing from way back when. Look at how you've really put in those dark darks punching into that dark tunnel in the background. The water just going to that pitch black and then as it moves forward, getting thinner and lighter until it eventually gets to white. At the very end of the tunnel, you see how those two archways have that little bit of light on them? Look at that space you're creating. That seems to go on for yards and yards. Here I want to talk a little bit more about when you said you wanted to be aware that art schools are looking for variety and playfulness and people stepping outside their comfort zone, which they are, definitely. But I feel like you're trying to show that too often in places where you're not letting yourself shine in what you're really, really good at. Compare this one with these. Totally different way of handling the mark making and the lines, and yet both are successful. There's no like right or wrong way. There's no like, there's no groundbreaking way to make marks more than another. What matters is if the image works and is successful. And this one is very successful. And the marks are playful, they're loose or they're sloppy. Whereas this one, very successful, but the marks are refined, they're focused, they're delicate. I think there was a trap that I kind of fell into around freshman year where I confused the words loose with good. So I would really let myself go wild and stuff like that. I was making work, but it wasn't the work I wanted to make. I learned a lot from it. Let's compare this one with this figure drawing you have earlier and just compare the two and look at how much more believable this one is. Look at how much more exciting it is. It also shows your hand and touch as an artist. It shows your ability to control space, your ability of knowing when to apply detail and when to let a piece get more abstract. I'd like you to turn this image into a grayscale and set it side by side this one and seeing how you can apply it to redo images like number two. By the way, before I forget, number three, I think it's just you need to like edit it a little bit, like make that backspace really push backwards by making it a little bit darker, making the lines a little bit less uh, bold than in the middle and foreground. The colors, they're just simple, straight out of the tube, blue, red, and yellow, but hey, it's coming off really well. This is a nice, exciting piece. Um, it's another one where, similar to this one, where like when I first opened the file, it was just a close-up of the suits. And I was like, man, that's some really cool texture going on in there. Similar to this one, when I opened up the file, wow, that's really cool brushwork and application. I wouldn't say it's one of your stronger pieces. I would suggest bringing in some of the cool painterly line quality and application of the paint that you have in this one into remaking another piece. Make it a little bit more of a bolder piece with still that excitement. This, the sketch page, it's cool to see, but I don't think it's really necessary for the portfolio, but it's really cool to see your process and how you plan through these compositions. That struggle to bring the looseness and the playfulness of a sketchbook into the final pieces. I hope I have the honor of being the first one of many people to tell you that because every art student will hear that phrase. The more critique that a portfolio has, I think that shows the more promise the portfolio has as well. The work is so good and you're going at such a good direction with it that all of this critique and criticism and feedback is really just suggestions of how it can be moving forward. This one, given what we've said, I would tweak it a little bit, but still include it. However, if you find yourself, you've got a lot of time on your hands, I would redo it because the composition's a little straightforward. This one, definitely redo it. Take what you've learned from listening to this and looking at your other pieces. Like, you can be your own best teacher. Look at what you're doing well in other works and bring it back into this image. Now, I want to say this is obviously looks like it was a professional model setup, perhaps pre-college. I didn't have access to that when I was applying to school, so I just got my stepdad reading the newspaper or my sister doing her homework. 
I drew people doing situations in my life. Talk with people, you can make it work. You don't need a nice professional studio setting like that. So don't feel like you have to include this one just because it shows a professional model setup. This one, like I said, it takes a very little bit of tweaking, but just make that door darker, push it into the back, because this is there's some really stellar stuff happening in the midground here. Your problem is not that the hand and the technique and the application is bad, the whole image is drawn like the middle ground. Yeah, I would redo these given what we've talked about in the recordings. This, stellar. Keep it in. Now we're at the end, you're seeing how this one is showing. It's not showing anything different that other pieces of yours are showing better. This one, I would keep it in. I would keep these in. There's also, I gotta say, there's a little bit of a glare on the images, so you might want to see if you can get a better photograph of these. This one, leave it in. Leave it in leave it in but if you've got the time redo it this one i'd leave it in yeah i'm gonna call it and say redo it with some of the things we've talked about this one definitely leave it in with the asterisks of like maybe including some of this painting technique looks like it's gouache i think yeah maybe including that elsewhere these definitely leave it in definitely leave it in take it out definitely leave it in leave it in keep this quality maybe in one of the pieces you recreate if you want to include something like this in go back to the sketchbook let that be your guide for how to recreate those pieces. I think your work is really stellar. You're really going in the right direction. You're doing all the right things right now, especially looking at this portfolio review. This is a guide for the next step, and it's just these slight pushes and tweaks in the next direction. Let loose those ideas of like what is and isn't good quality line or image making. Know that you've got that technique and it's the important part is letting your voice shine through and technique is simply finding the best way for your voice to shine through. So a technique that works for some people might not work for you and vice versa. You have to find the way and the best way to make your work really shine for yourself. Really excited to see where your work goes from here, my friend.